Hello everyone, I'm Salad, and welcome back to Danganronpa 3. Last time, we just finished up our, I believe, second class trial. And it was the first tr class trial that really felt like a beginning class trial. It didn't have uh, as much of a crazy twist at the end. I kind of figured out what was going on there. And also, after that, we learned that Maki is actually the ultimate, uh, wait, ultimate assassin. Yes, that, that was, that's what it was. <gasps> Shocker! Ultimate Assassin. It, it was it was pretty obvious. Well, it wasn't that obvious, but it, 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 she was definitely more than she seemed. It was definitely obvious that she was more than what she let on, rather than just the ultimate caregiver. But one thing that is curious to me is why did she choose, intentionally choose, to say that she was the ultimate care, child caregiver? Because she could have chosen any kind of lie to give us for what her ultimate was. Why did she specifically choose be a ch an ultimate child caregiver is because she had somebody who took care of her as a child and that le had a big impression upon her or did she not get good care as a child and that's why she wishes that she could be a good child caregiver to other people so that they would not suffer the same fate as she did those are the thoughts kind of thoughts that are going through my head right now because that's just an interesting thing that she decided to intentionally choose that as her lie, the, that she would be the ultimate child caregiver. I think that's all I got to say. Let's see where this is going from here. And if I recall, Kokichi uh, was the uh, person who forced her to let us know what her ultimate was. Oh, okay. What um, you're seeing now is live footage of the sky from our camera at the scene. Uh, residents run for cover as an object believed to be a meteorite approaches. Wait, so uh, I'm gonna continue on for a second. You can clearly see the meteors thoughts. raining down. But I'm thinking of my "we're all on Mars" theory. We are witnessing what looks like the end of the world. This is not a movie. I repeat, this is not a movie. This is live, unedited footage. This is real. The sky is falling before our very eyes. Well, it, it, the sky isn't falling, but that it does look pretty bad. We've just been notified that the government has officially declared a state of emergency. Subway stations have been opened as shelters. The government is instructing citizens to remain calm and evacuate to their nearest shelter. Children and invalids are to be given first priority. What's weird about this is this, this, this kind of thing doesn't seem to have anything to do with the ultimate despair. Like, uh, even the ultimate despair isn't going to be able to cause a... Cause this. So... Mm, transfer student, chapter three. What? Transfer student from beyond the grave? So we get a new student who's already dead coming back to us? Is that what that's trying to say? Huh. Please let it be Kaede. <laughs> It was the day after the second class trial. We all headed to Maki's lab on the third floor of the school building. Okay, finally we're going to be able to go in there. I still want to be able to go into what I assume is Kokichi's lab as well. The waiting us there was an unexpected sight. Kokichi has very Nagito energy to him. Oh! That's an Come interesting on, thing, a figure in the background there. What the heck is this? Mm. It's like Weapon Warehouse. Right? See, I told you she's not the ultimate child caregiver. She's the ultimate assassin. Maki is the ultimate assassin? Is that all right? Okichi, you learned that from the Moda video, right? Monokuma said everyone's ultimate talent at the beginning of their video. Oh, true. Ryoma knew Maki's true identity because he had her motive mot video. And because you saw that... Hmm? Hmm? I knew it the whole time. Given my position, I'd obviously know before any of you, right? And also, it wasn't... It wasn't... It wasn't that strange. Huh? Although, guessing specifically assassin would be a bit difficult. Your position? Ah. Oh, don't worry about it. That was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, her reaction yesterday pretty much gave away that she's the ultimate assassin. Yeah, you can probably snap my neck like a twig right now. 
But that's not your style. You'd rather kill from the shadows. Right, Miss Ultimate Assassin? Hmm. But why ever did she lie about being the ultimate child caregiver? Because <laughs> assassins hide to do all their killing. Mm, like, uh, no, I, I'm sure... I don't know. I don't know why she hit Well, it, it's obvious why she hit it, because it's not something she's proud of, I guess? If people find out they're assassins, look at all get... Look at all cautious, and they can't kill anyone. That's true, too. It can't be. Did she hide her real identity because she was planning to kill us? Hmm. But then, why hasn't she killed anyone yet? She's had many opportunities to do so. I'm disappointed. Jeez. Robots can't even understand human feelings, let alone a girl's heart. How rude. Please take back what you just said. I can, too, understand human feelings. Listen closely. But I'm still in the process of collecting data. Please give me data, please. Right? If you're so worried, why do you ask her? She's been holed up in her room all day. But I can't promise that she won't try to kill you like she tried to do me. <laughs> Good thing everyone was there to stop her. But what about next time? Best let's sleep in God's lie. <laughs> the talent of a killer. That is the biggest threat to all of us who wish to survive. Let's just lock her up somewhere so she can't kill anyone. Mm. I'll leave that to you, Gonta. Huh? Why are we locking her up? She didn't do anything. I guess she uh, strangled uh, Kokichi for threatening to divulge her secret. I guess that's probably not ideal. I don't know why she... She, she reacted very violently to that, which is not a good look for her. Got it. I, I'll help too. I don't want another killing to happen. Wait. Uh, wait, you don't have to take it that far. It's not like she's trying to kill us. Sneak attack. A sneak attack is the way to go. We have to strike before she does. Hit her from behind. Um. It reminds me of the situation with Sakura in Danganronpa 1. Sneak attack? Strike before she does? Should Naikido Master be saying those things? It'll be okay. If that's the case, then Atua and I will work with everyone to help hold the peace. That's fine. Yes, so, then I'll tear you on. I'll use my magic to pull pom-poms out of my mouth. What? I don't think that's going to help us very much, Shimiko, but thanks. Wow! That kind of peep-peppy cheer magic would make anyone excited. Don't worry about it. Hold on, guys. Leave Maki to me. I'll take down that mask of hers. <sighs> Ultimate assassin, my ass. Always messing around. Huh? K Kaito, don't do anything stupid. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's leave everything to Kaito. Well, I don't think she's going to kill Kaito, but I am worried for Kaito in the more long term now <laughs> because he's so nice and helpful. You get it? Gonta, you should stand back. Nothing good ever happens when you try to help. Huh? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sorry. Come on, man. Hey, Gonta, like I told you, man shouldn't apologize so easily. Ah, Manakuma's well, always... Well. Oh, I don't need everyone's usual reactions. Time's a bit of a factor here. Really? Really, Monokuma? Now you're, you're worried about time? I doubt that. You're always going on these rambling soliloquies for no reason. Your monocubs are designed to speak nonsense 24-7. You always would have, like, random fights with, uh, Monami for no apparent reason. And now suddenly time's a factor? Yeah, right. Monokuma's never worried about time. <coughs> but Monokuma! Stay back! Everyone, get behind Gonta! Kimiko, get behind me! I'll surround you with my body to keep you safe! Be quiet! I just said I don't need your usual reactions! You're it's almost halftime, so the stats should be out soon for everyone to obsess over! Stats? Now then. And since you guys overcame the class trial, I figured I'd give you all a wonderful prize! I said, I figured I'd give you all a wonderful prize! You're waiting for our reactions to be all... <gasps> Wait, I can do it. I can do that, right? But yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. I give you your reaction, Monokuma. You happy? Oh, oh. Huh? My adorable little cubs aren't coming. That's strange. There they are. Rue. Yeah. Rise and shine, Ursine. They're finally here! Yay! 
you're so cute today. It's practically practically obscene. Seriously? Just wow. You guys are seriously cute. Have you always been this cute? <laughs> ah, the shock of my super cute kids seems to be making me go bald. Like in patches. Okay. He's turning into a zombie. He's actually balding. Ugh, gross. I'm I'm cold, very cold. Hey, my cute little cubs, could you hurry up and give them the prize? It's it's too cold. I can't stand it. Hurry, I want to go somewhere warm. Huh? What's wrong? Why aren't you backing me up? Father, we are not your slaves. Oh. We will not let you use us anymore. Okay. Mm huh? So then. From now on, I will be calling the shots. Huh? Uh, good one, kids. Very funny. Uh, you can show me where the hidden cameras are now. That's old. Father, you're too old for this. You've been doing this so long, you become predictable. Leave it to me. It's the age of the, of the monocubs now. Out with the old, in with the new. What? What? But what about all the longtime fans who? <laughs> Anyways, you're just that. You're just a has been. Why don't you retire somewhere and work on your tan? <laughs> the has been. Wonderful. Good job, you two. You memorized my script perfectly. Interesting that he's got them. Uh, that Monodem has the other two on his side now. <laughs> Did he threaten them to- <laughs> I mean, he has been- he has been killing the other ones off one by one. Do, do you really think that you can defy your dad? Do you think I'd forgive such- Huh? Oh, they've got the mechs. <laughs> Did you forget, father? Only we can pilot the Exosols. What? Really? How could you forget that? Thank you, Father, but the Academy is under our harmonious control now. Step aside, Father. <laughs> it, it can't be! I still wonder to what extent any of this is Monokuma's plan. But obviously the fact that Monodam has, like, Byakuya's voice... ...would make me think that this- it's not part of his plan. And it's a similar situation to Rampa 2, where Monodam is like a traitor for us, trying to help us out. But then why would the other Monod- I don't know, it's confusing. No way! Are you saying that treating you like my- treating you kids like my property was wrong? You're the worst of the worst! It's completely and utterly wrong! No, 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 no! No, 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 no way! Yeah, he's bald again. Uh, it seems the shock made him bald. This time for good. So then. Now then, as the new headmasters, we have for you bastards a us. wonderful prize. Hmm. Uh um, let's see what the prize is this time. Uh. And a ninja scroll as a prize bundle! Okay, and these are for the open world puzzles again, I guess. Wow, what a bunch of random junk. I mean, bravo! Bravo! <sighs> we okay. look forward to working with you. I hope we can all get along. Hmm? Uh, I had a feeling it was more junk. Oh, man. Oh, man. We didn't need more junk. We had way too much anyway. And its name is Kibo. This robophobic. Now you've gone too far. Everyone, we can't allow this kind of intolerant language. Let's get along. No fighting. Everyone has to get along. Use this prize to explore the new areas together. Well, I like that we're getting new areas to open up. I guess that's, well, I mean, that happens all the time, right? Actually. That's normal. Also, we've hidden another flashback light somewhere too. I keep accidentally opening that thing. I hope you all grow even closer, now that you've regained more of your memories. Another flashback light. Okay, so they're progressively opening up more of our memories. That's gonna be interesting. So 
so long. Farewell. So, jeez, those cups suck. Monokumo is way better. <laughs> Only you would say that, Kokichi. So I was gonna say I'm trying to remember what stuff we got from the first flashback light, and I know it had to do with like um how all the ultimates, the ultimate hunt, that's what it was called, right? And how nobody seems to remember the ultimate hunt exactly. I wonder what this is gonna be about. Damn it. I got too much pride as a human to let those robots push me around. The world would be a better place if robots don't, didn't exist. They should all be destroyed. I'll commit that to my memory bank. I've recorded your intolerant remarks and I and will report them to the proper authorities. Hey, so... So, uh, what are we gonna do? If we use this junk, we can open new, up new places, but... Woohoo! Yay! A whole a new arena, a new area, means we can have a lot more fun. I can't speak. I don't know if we have. I don't know if we'll have that much fun. I find myself more interested in the flashback light. Perhaps we'll recall the school secrets. Okay. If that's the case, then we'll deal with the murder girl later. Listen up. Hey, bro. I'll leave this to you again. Do a good job, all right? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Got it. Gonta protect you. You find dangerous place. Go and get Gonta. Gonta will protect you. But. Yeah, all that aside, what are we gonna do with that thing? Uh, are we supposed to be doing anything with that thing? Why do we care? Um, we'll just leave him here. Leave him here in the ultimate assassin place? Uh, I suppose I should go try out these items around the school like last time. But first I need to look around in here. Um, what was the button for that? There we go. We got weapons. I guess we'll take a look at them first. There are a lot of different weapons here. Maki knows how to handle all of these? Well, why would an assassin fight with a chainsaw? <laughs> black case? What is this? There are three black cases lined up. Do they all have weapons inside? You're not gonna open them? I have a feeling whatever is in there is important. Ugh. Whoa! I exclaimed in awe at the sheer number of guns lined up. It can't be real. I'm assuming the next murder is going to be Blaine Bond Maki and it's not going to be Maki. No, of course they aren't real. They're airsoft guns. In fact, my theory is that uh, Kaito is going to be the one that dies. He's going to die to somebody who's not Maki and they're going to try to pin it on Maki. And the person that does the killing is going to be... Uh, let me, let me check. Who are the people we have alive? My theory is the person who will kill Kaito is... Hmm. Thinking, thinking. Uh, it could be a lot of different people. One of these three. These three have not been doing much in the stories. Well, I guess uh, Angie did last time. So I think it's one of these, Tenko or Sumugi. And of the two... I will... Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna suspect Sumugi, because she hasn't done anything all game. So, that's my theory, <laughs> uh, based on absolutely nothing, that Sumugi will kill Kaito, and it will be blamed on Maki. No, of course they aren't real, they're airsoft guns. Wait, they are? Well... Ah, uh, of course, Monokuma wouldn't give us real weapons. Really? Exosols may be strong, but if we were to revolt with real guns, Monokuma would never allow that. Okay, maybe that, that pokes some holes in my theory, but still. And if these weapons were real, and if Kurumi were here, she might have was, might have taken us all out in order to escape. Yeah, I mean that's always been a possibility. In the, some of the previous games, they occasionally mentioned it. I think in Dungan Rumpel One, they did. If someone just went around killing everybody, then school life would be over. That would be that would be a pro strat for sure, for her people. Yeah. 
All right, I guess we'll talk to Motokuma. Not gonna bother. Why? I think it's dangerous to leave- Well, I guess it doesn't matter, because he can go anywhere he wants, but it's, it seems kind of weird to leave him in here. Kaito, why are you staying in here? Yo. I'll leave this to you again. Do a good job, all right? Uh, okay. Uh, well, I don't mind, but... Hmm? Don't mind, but what? No. No, it's just that when we were talking about Maki, you looked really upset. Ah. Well, yeah. Can't believe she's an assassin. Well, that's... Can't believe it either. She doesn't seem like she could be some terrifying assassin. <laughs> terrifying, huh? Maybe she doesn't want to be an assassin. Maybe she's like, um, uh, Kilua from Hunter x Hunter, where or she was trained as an assassin, but she actually just wants to be a child caregiver. Either way, leave Maki to me. I'll take down that mask of hers. Okay. I think that's all there is to see here. It's just that, uh, that, like, cape or that, like, suit in the background is really conspicuous. The red one. What are you doing here, Angie? Yay! If a new area opens up, that means more fun for everyone. Atua and I will cooperate, so everyone can have a super fun school life. Because Atua is watching over us. Atua sees everything, even what everyone truly desires. Huh? What everyone truly desires? Maybe. That's right. Atua is always watching over me. How divine! Yeah, ha ha ha! That's Atua for ya. He's so divine. What do you mean? What everyone desires? Or does she think she knows what everyone's desire? What everyone de desires? And is she gonna try to make it happen? I feel like Angie's getting more and more creepy. I agree. She's always been creepy. I've never trusted her religious fanaticism. I just, I wonder what she sees, what she's saying that she thinks she sees what everyone desires. Does that mean that she thinks that she's gonna try to fulfill somebody else's desire? Somebody, someone's desire to kill Maki, for example? Hmm. All right, Koriki, what do you have to say? Humanity is beautiful. Every part of a human, every human being, even their ugly sides is beautiful. There's no limit to beauty. Kirumi, she too had her own exceptional beauty. Excellent. A crime that was so bold yet calculated. A battle against the truth. Brutally killing others for her beliefs. Unfeelingly sacrificing the few for the many. Wonderful. And her attachment to life and determination to live. Her attempt to escape was so very ugly. It was pathetic, pitiful, wretched. But it was beautiful. I had never before seen such a beauty in a human being before. <laughs> uh huh. I have no idea what Kyo is talking about. He just loves the good and the bad of humanity. But in my own way, I also have Kurumi's last movement spear and burned into my mind. Moments. Um. Yeah, I don't think Korikyo is going to kill anyone because he seems to really just enjoy watching other people and watching humanity do stuff. He doesn't seem to be care much about participating himself. Like, he doesn't even see himself as part of humanity. <sighs> what is happening all at once? It's just too much for me. The almost case was a shock, but then to find out Karumi ran the country and Maki's an assassin. An average citizen like me can't keep up. I'm not sure the ultimate cosplayer can be considered average. Right. But I'm glad I'm an, I'm an average citizen. If I ever had a reason to live as strong as Kurumi's, or if I ever lost everything important to me like Ryoma did, if anything like that happened, I probably would have just cowered in a corner somewhere. I guess. Putting aside whether that what Kurumi or Ryoma did was right or wrong, I think it's amazing that they were even able to do anything at all. For people like them to die in this place, it's just not fair. Yeah? Didn't say anything wrong there. Gonta. Um. Gonta, what's wrong? Oh. Oh, sorry. Gonta think he's a bug. Uh, um. Yeah, you said that before. Is it a bug you can barely see? Mm. Yeah, Gonta feel like he can see it sometimes. 
Yeah, weird. He's been talking about this before. Look, Gota can barely see it. It's probably a mis- It's probably mis- Oh, I, I, that was him speaking. But Gonta can barely see it. it it's probably a mistake. Gonta. Because Gonta wished there were bugs here, so... I just made mistake bug dust for them. Is that really the case? Would Gonta make that mistake more than once? Allow Gonta. Anyway, if you find dangerous area, come get Gonta. Gonta will protect you. I know he means well, but I'm hesitant to ask him to be a shield. Hmm... Gonta is honestly getting more and more suspicious, but what could he mean by that? What could he think that he sees that's the size of like a really small bug? <sighs> Let me think. Well, dust, dirt. He could be having some problem with his vision. <laughs> he could be getting vision issues for some reason. What else could he possibly, possibly be seeing slightly? I don't know. I don't think he's so superhuman that he'd be like seeing bacteria and microbes and whatever. And what would the meaning of what he's seeing be? I'm trying to think because this is obviously a clue that's gonna come into play later. And clearly I'm not supp supposed to know what he's talking about yet. But I really wanna figure it out before it, he sa anything is revealed. Something small that he saw twice. When was the first time he thought he saw it? Was it in the garden? I mean, in like the backyard area where we were like looking at the... Oh, there was also that, that like... There was also that, that plaque or whatever on the ground, right? That rock that had like writing on it and I forgot what it said. It was like some various letters. And I don't think that ever came into play. And now we, what we've got going on is... I'm thinking he sees something. All three times I think it was Gonta though that discovered it. Gonta discovered like the plate on the ground with the words. And Gonta is the only one who saw those things these two times. Why? Why only Gonta? I don't know. Gonta is, Gonta is interesting. He's clearly got more going on. Um, anyways, I guess I should go through here first. This was supposedly just painted on, but okay, there you go. Hmm. Durko laughs. Looks like we can get to the back now. Hmm. What, I wonder, is beyond here? Perhaps someone awaits us? Huh? You think? <laughs> really a jest? Yes, this world is full of jests. A world full of jests? I suppose that's true. What are you talking about? You think this is a joke? I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. The staircase. We can get to the fourth floor now. Uh... I wonder what the upper floors are like. There's nothing dangerous, right? There's always something dangerous. Or is there? It's okay. Don't worry. Gonta will protect you no matter what. Thank you. Thanks, Gonta. That's reassuring. A tuxedo or the mask would suit you. What? Um, hmm? tuxedo's essential for gentlemen, but masks too? Well, I should go. Hmm. Gonta's always talking about he's, how he's going to protect people. But I don't know. Ah. Weird place. Interesting music, though. The frightening atmosphere was so oppressive, I let out a shout without realizing it. Uh, um... What is going on here? Oh no, is this gonna over... Is this gonna change the music? I wanna keep this music. Okay, good. So, um, this is a made-up story, but our brutal murder, murder supposedly took place here. Stop it! Please stop! If I hear any scary stories, I won't be able to go to the bathroom alone. Um... Oh, but she say it made up story, so that mean it okay, right? So long, farewell. Okay, a murder happened here, kind of like what happened in the uh, higher floors of Host Peak Academy, that I believe is Zero Kamakura did. Also know this Hajime. Hmm. I'm 
Interesting music. I'm just listening to it a little bit. Um. This area feels spooky. Gold is scared too. <laughs> it's okay. The murder story was just made up. No, not just story. Gold to have weird feeling. Maybe stain on that wall over there is blood. No. It's just a stain. It's probably just staged, you know. Huh? Staged? Um. When Akuma or the Mono Cubs probably just put it here to scare it, there to scare us. Huh? Really? The script's been flipped, huh? Uh, um. Sumugi, does this kind of stuff bother you? Uh. Well, it's not that I'm okay with it. It's just when it's so overdone like this, it makes it seem fake, so I feel okay. Actually. But Konta, you were so reliable until just now. I guess it's too early for you to wear the t a tuxedo and mask. Huh? Uh, but no! But tuxedo's essential for gentlemen! See, all this talk about him like wearing a tuxedo and a mask or whatever is making me think of that outfit in the assassin's place. And if he's gonna wear that instead. And this talk about Sumugi being okay with the sight of like scary stuff as long as it's overdone. That's sus as well. Everything is suspicious right now. Can I go past you? Okay, I can. Hmm. Go in these rooms first. It's called left room. Empty room left. Is that a ghost, Monokuma? Candles just barely light a dim, dusty room. Hmm. It's creepy. Hard to see, too. It seems like something that would appear in an occult manga. There's a tragic feeling here. It really does feel like something's going to pop out at you. Hmm. Candles on the walls are the only light in the room. There are no windows here. It get pitch black if candles go out. Right? Uh, please don't put them out. I don't really like the dark. Well, I can't imagine many people do. Hmm, but you know who might be able to see well in the dark? Somebody who can even see some, like, tiny speck that's barely visible. Like Gonta. Also, it seems like there's space for two candle holders on each side. But only one of them on each side is being used. That's just curious, just making a note of things. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything else to see in this room. Oh, never mind, I have to talk to everyone. Fine. Um. Even though I said all that, it seems like something's going to jump out after all. This feels like one of those old abandoned asylums full of lunatics or criminals. To the point that I'd half expect to see a corpse bur burst through a wall and chase us. Sorry. Sorry, that's not something to joke about. Mm. Nothing here. What's this room for anyway? Oh, wait. That's a, a what? Didn't I already look at everything? Other candle? Candles on the walls are the only light in the room. Uh, am I supposed to look at this? The monitor for communicating with us. There's nothing on the screen. But just seeing it makes me feel sick. Hmm. But if that monitor turned on, there would be light in the room. The floor is important. These floorboards feel a bit unstable. Oh! Oh! This floorboard got no nails in it! Huh? Uh, really? That means somebody could hide something under it. Hmm. Yeah, floorboard just resting on top of a cross piece. That's true. I suppose it's not just my imagination. But, but each floorboard is thick, and they got no gaps between them, so it look okay. Unless you had some sort of suction cup type device to stick onto the floor and pull it up, or something sticky. Go to not worry about falling through floor all of a sudden. But, but it's pretty dark here. It's a little hard to see where we're stepping. And in the corner, there's a hole in the floor, so it might not be good to go over there. I see. So if there's a floor, if there's a hole over there, then somebody could pull up the floorboards from that, starting from there. 
There doesn't seem to be anything else of interest in this room. It doesn't look like there's anything else important here. Just an empty room. Oh, oh, it's not only empty room. You see, three same looking doors in hall, right? All those rooms empty just like this one. And they only got candles for light too. Hmm. Ah, so there are three of them. Hmm. Anyway, we don't gotta worry. No reason we ever need to use empty room like this. You're right. True. Um. Then can we leave soon? The darkness and the shaky floor are make, making me nervous. It's only a matter of time before the shutters burst open and a newspaper gets blown in. Well, there's no shutters. Well. But there are no windows though. <laughs> I don't have any reason to waste time in an empty room. But that just makes this room more suspicious to me. But apparently there's a hole over there. In the floor, good to know. Well, we're checking all the rooms anyways, I don't care. I don't care if they say that there's nothing in them. Ah, I see, this is exactly like the other room. It's really dim, so it's difficult to move around. I can see the gap in the, in the, the corner, I should be careful. There's the same gap in the corner every single time? Candles on the walls are the only light in the room. Alright, fine, we're gonna leave. We're still gonna check the last room. I see it's exactly, exactly like the other room. Check the floor again. Yep, same gap in the corner. So every room really is the same. All right, it's just good to confirm that. And what the heck is this? It's a painting of a continuation of this area. This is another area that we're gonna unlock later on. Also, I just realized I'm off the map, so that's interesting. Uh, Alright, I guess I'll go this way and look in here. Must be a door to an ultimate lab. I wonder whose lab this is. I should look inside. Oh, interesting. We're gonna, we're gonna see this immediately. Anthropologist lab. Cool looking. It's almost like a museum or library. It's huge and a, a little eerie. A lot of Chinese vibes to this area. There are various objects stored in shelves and cases. Some of them are very rare. <laughs> it would appear this is my lab. The ultimate anthropologist lab. Wonderful. It's so wonderful. My face contorts with glee. Not even university labs are so well stocked. There's a lot of stuff in here. But who brought all this stuff here? I suppose there's no point in thinking about it. Nothing in this place makes sense. A lot of area statues. And a sword, huh? It's a large wooden dog statue on the pedestal. It looks pretty old. It has some kind of strange power to it. It makes me shiver just looking at it. Could it be? Th that's... Incredible. Oh, can it be? I never could have dreamed that this truly existed. Kyo, quivering with excitement, reached out to that particular dog statue. And slowly remove the white fabric on the, on the pedestal. Uh, can this be? Oh, there's even a cage. This is perfect. Uh, um. Perfect for what? What are the statue and cage for? <laughs> I never thought that I would be able to touch the real thing in all my life. Today is a momentous day indeed. He's so focused on that, he's not even listening. Okay. I don't know why he- the, the thing that ex confuses me so most about that is I don't know why he was so excited about there being a cage there. Like, sure, you can be excited about this statue because maybe it's like some sort of important cultural relic or artifact from some- something or other, right? But the cage is just a cage. Anybody can make a cage, right? I have a feeling that cages are gonna come into play later though. There's something in this case. 
It's a golden katana. How beautiful. Now, does the gold coating come off when you touch it, though? Rusted in places, but it looks about a yard long and still sharp. Is that real gold? It's probably valuable. You were drawn to that katana, I see. However, it's merely coated with gold leaf. Hmm. Ah, so it's not actually made of gold. Well, that said, that katana has immense va anthropological value. In certain rural areas, katanas used to defeat generals in wars are worshipped as, worshipped as gods. That is one such katana. It is an extremely precious relic necessary to spread. <laughs> Whoa! That's a super rad katana! I want to take a look and see! Just to spread what, though? Kokichi suddenly popped up between us and grabbed the katana from the case. <laughs> Kyo's not going to be happy about that. Wait! You mustn't touch it without! Okay! Don't worry, I'll be super careful with it! Would I lie to you? Kokichi completely ignored Kyo's warning and unsheathed the sword. Hmm. Now, this, this katana is the real deal! It's even gold-plated for that authentic look! How is gold plating making it have an authentic look? That makes it look inauthentic. Yeah. Hmm, I see. It could also be used as a murder weapon. Hold on. Okichi, that is an extremely precious relic. Please do not treat it lightly or... I'll tear out your nerves. I will tear out your nerves. Please don't. Okay, I get it. Please don't make such scary threats. Kokichi slid the sword back into its sheath and handed it back to Kyo. I have a feeling that Kokichi had some other agenda when touching that. Did he want to check something specific about the blade? Whoa. Ew, my hands are all sticky. That gold plating flakes off so easily. Yeah, okay, I figured. There was that kind of meaning to this. I guess that's what makes it an authentic katana. Oh dear. Yes, it is very old. So the gold leaf comes off easily. In any event, please do not touch things without permission. These are all precious relics. If you do so again, I will tear out your nerves. Please don't. I get it. The scary threats really aren't necessary. So that's what Kyo sounds like when he gets angry. Hmm. That's the hallway. Let's check out the bookshelf first. It's packed with books and scrolls. They're all weathered and old. That's true. I don't think I could read it. All of these if I had a million years. Hmm. There's a book in the display case. The bookcases were full of books, but I imagine this one is special. Hmm. This one looks like it was bound by hand. Could it be? Can it truly be? Like his usual quiet cell, Kyo shouted and ran over to me with an alarmed expression. With steady, careful hands, he took the book from his showcase. Incredible. It is! How amazing! It is actually real! Um... Oh, what's that book, uh, Kyo? Can this be? It's an extremely precious document! Do you understand? This book is a history of the fabled caged dog village, since you have been destroyed long ago. So I'm assuming that's what that statue is from? Caged dog village? The Cage Dog Village had a reputation for using many dark arts and spells. The village was destroyed at the hands of a feudal lord who feared their power. Destroyed at the hands of a feudal lord who feared their power. Hmm. Many dark arts and spells. Okay. But what girl, the lone survivor, risked her life to write this book? Hmm. Some girl from a hmm, cage dog village that used dark arts and spells. A village that was destroyed at the hands of a feudal lord. I'm what I'm thinking right now. My thoughts are that that one girl is one of us. Wonderful. Which means this is all her handwriting. This book is an extremely precious one-of-a-kind relic that has been soaked in her bitter grudge. Hmm. One-of-a-kind? That is valuable. I see, yes. On top of that, on top of that, since this book has such a reputation, there are few copies. Since I was fortunate enough, enough to obtain one of those copies, I have already memorized it. Oh. 
But I never thought I'd be able to lay, lay eyes on the real one. What a trick of fate. Uh, um... Uh, Kyo, what do you mean by reputation? Yes. The rumor goes that the spells and dark arts inscribed on this book are extremely potent. However... They surpass the comprehension of people who live in a world of science and technology. That is why it was buried in the darkness, along with the entire Cage Dog Village. Hmm... But it seems those who were no, no mere rumors. I can feel the power seeping out from this book. The deep-seated grudge of a girl whose village was destroyed permeates every letter. It sounds like they're talking about Maki. This is getting weird. I think I should just end the conversation. Hmm. I feel as though the only thing I've learned is that I've learned nothing about this lab. But we've learned a lot about a cage dog village and the fact that there's one survivor from it and the fact that everybody was buried. Hold on, let me re... Yeah, the village was destroyed by... What did they say? A feudal lord. The village was destroyed by a feudal lord and everyone was buried there. Only one person survived. The person that survived probably learned the dark arts and spells. I don't think they're talking about uh, Himiko Yumeno. I don't think she learned her dark arts and spells from there. So, could it be that Maki is the ultimate assassin, but she assassinates using dark arts and spells? And all those weaponry in the ultimate assassin's place are actually just, I don't know, to fool us into thinking that she uses those to commit her crimes and she actually doesn't use weaponry. She uses dark arts and spells. That would make a lot of sense. Well, I mean, it wouldn't make a lot of sense in reality. But in this game, it would make a lot of sense. By the way, Shuichi, would you like to lend your ear to the voices of the dead? Huh? The what? Do you understand? The Cage Dog Village documents contain many dark arts unique to that village. Of all of them, the one I find most in interesting is a seance called the Cage Child. Oh, and there we go with... Bringing up children, ultimate child caregiver. Yes. In fact, the wooden dog statue and iron cage over there are to be used in this very seance. <laughs> to discover it exists is surprising enough, but to actually have it before me. You see. So, would you like to try? Let us converse with the dead using the cage child, shall we? No. Uh, no thanks. I don't have an interest in the occult. Mm. Now, now. You must have dismissed it as simply the occult. Some matters you refer to as the occult are of the utmost importance to anthrop anthropology. Dismissing things you don't understand as the occult is a defilement to all cultures, yes? No. Uh, yes, but talking to the dead... Say... Have you ever wanted to speak to the dead? Huh? Huh? Speak with the dead? If it were... If it were possible, I suppose I'd like to talk to her one more time. Yeah, Kaede. If possible, I would have Kaede be the one person who isn't dead right now. No. N no, no, I decline. Okay. Even if it were possible to speak to- Even if it were possible- I'm mixing, mixing up my voices. Even if it were possible to speak with the dead, I don't have anything to say. Not yet. It doesn't feel like he's lived up to his promise yet. The only thing I'd want to say is, we escaped. We finally got out of here. <laughs> The determination is beautiful. Perhaps you are correct. Calling on the dead out of curiosity would only be a blasphemy. Forgive me. I lost myself. One must call upon them only at, at the appropriate time. You know who might deal with all this occult stuff and who might actually go through with all this nonsense? Uh, what's her face? The girl who always calls on Atua. She might deal, she might uh, like be interested in this kind of stuff. I felt a shiver up my spine. Hmm. Anything else to say, Kabuchi? <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the first time I've seen Kyo get so mad. He's scary when he gets mad. If he tore out my nerves, I think I might cry. It's really tough to do Kyo, Kora Kyo's voice <laughs> for, for a while. Uh, all right, back in the hallway we go. 
a weird looking area. I wonder what all. I don't think all this. I can't find any meaning at all. This is what I'm trying to. Is what I'm trying to say right now. It's just a bunch of random squiggly squiggles. Looks nice and demonic. A lot of these things are missing their heads. Actually, how many heads are missing? Okay, these two are there. There's heads are accounted for. And then these three are all missing their heads. There is meaning to this. I proclaim, I proclaim that there's actually some meaning to this and these heads, the ones that are missing heads and the ones that are not missing heads are gonna be important later. So we got three missing heads here. We got two missing heads in the middle there. Hmm. If this was binary, this would represent one, or like if we count, let's say that we count the heads, this would represent, let's see, this is the twos place, four, eight, so eight plus four plus two. Eight plus four plus two is 12 plus 14. So this is 14, this is four plus two, which is six. So 14 and six. And 14 plus six, that's 20. Therefore, 20 is the number. That will be a key number in the upcoming uh, in the upcoming trial. Just you wait. 14 and 6. I'll remember that in binary. Hanging scroll. What's this? It's like a hanging scroll, but it's blank. Oh, I thought this was an entrance to something. So we got a blank hanging uh, hanging scroll here. Hmm. In random holes. What's up with that? It's like there's supposed to be a pillar here, but there isn't. Odd. Okay, we got the painter's room. That's from the uh, Atua girl, right? Whatever her name was. Angie. It's a dwarf to an ultimate lab. From the looks of it, I'd say it's for art. She investigated a little. Grabbed the Nordarm and turned it. Hmm. Huh? Locked. It's locked. And that's clearly Andy's room. So boring. Yep. It seems like we can't go. Like, it seems like it. Guess we can't go in. Hmm. Why is it locked? The other ultimate labs weren't locked. Ah. Oh, by the way, this lab has some kind of rear entrance at the end of the hallway. I'm disappointed. That was locked too. And what do you mean the other ultimate labs aren't locked? Yes, they are. His is locked. Uh, um... If all the doors are locked, how are we gonna get inside? <laughs> Don't give up yet, just yet, because I have a secret technique. As if on cue, we heard the metallic click of a lock opening. The door slowly opened. Yep, there's Angie. Yaha! Yeah Yaha! Yeah Can I help you? Hmm. Angie, you were in here? Hey, hey, I feel weird chatting out here. So let's all go inside already, okay? How pushy. Come in, come in, please come in. Even ever polite, Angie invited us into the lab anyway. So why was it locked in the first place, Angie? Why did you lock it initially? What were you trying to do in there and what is hidden from us now that you're letting us in? Sus. Angie is the most suspicious one so far now. There are various art and carving tools. Makes sense for the ultimate artist's lab. Hmm. Why does this lab have locks? Hmm. Atua has spoken. He says this classroom was probably made for me. Huh? What does that mean? What do you mean, what does that mean? It's our ultimate lab. <laughs> I will answer that with my sexy, beautiful voice. So one thing that concerns me is all these open paint canisters and like those uh, black splotches on the walls. Was there something on there when we came, when she first came in and did she cover it up? Ah. Oh, wait a second. We said I was gonna answer that question. Eh? No, we didn't. Does she remember getting even worse, Monotaro? 
You promised, because I don't remember you not promising. Stop it! That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, because if you did, if you did, if you, you have to not promise. Yeah, that's what you have to I do. I don't care. You don't promise, you not promise. So what? Just let me do it. If you don't, I'll stick my hand up my, my butt, then shove it around in your mouth and rattle your molars around. Ah! That's insanitary. Whoa, oh, wait, what of them? We weren't fighting. We were just messing around, you know, because we're friends. It's fine. As long as you're getting along. So? So, what's up with the key? Actually. Oh, yes. Angie's the kind of girl who can't focus on her art unless she's alone. Maybe. I must shut out all people and noises so that I can be one with the great Atua. Atua is much too shy to be one with me in front of other people. Hmm. Wow, like a porn star. <laughs> Ow, it's the opposite. Yeah, that actually doesn't make any sense. And then? So any room where I'm going to make art needs to have a key, but... I'm surprised the Monocubs knew that. Yeah. Huh? Hmm. And these are all my favorite art supplies, sculpting tools too. How did you know? Um, uh, what should I say? I I'm not a good improviser. Mm. Calm down, I'm even worse. Because we know everything about you bastards. We are all friends. Because we want to be your friends. <laughs> Why'd you call us bastards? Like that. I don't want to be friends with you. I'm only interested in Monokuma. I don't want to get friendly with knockoff products. <laughs> Fair, Kokichi. Why? Why do you do? Why would you say that? Why do you hate me? I will not forgive that. I will not. I won't forgive anyone who refuses to get along with me. And uh, yeah, you gotta be. Monodem is the most serial killer of them all. Now, now, Monodam, we haven't given them the key to this room, have we? Okie dokie. Okay, here it is. But there's only one key, so don't lose it. Okay. There's only one key to this room, huh? That's another plot point they're adding. But how did she come out of here in the first place if they're only giving us the key now? Why was she in there originally? That doesn't make any sense. How she? How did she come out of this room? If, there's, if they didn't even give us the key yet. That doesn't make any sense. Can she lockpick? Is that an oversight on the, or is that an important plot point? So then, let me see that key. I have a feeling that's gonna come back later. She somehow got into this room without a key, and somebody else is gonna have the key, and she's actually gonna be in this room, and we're gonna think that she couldn't have been in the room because she can't have the key, but she actually could have, because she apparently has a way in here. Monodam swiped the key from Monofanny, then lifted it up to his mouth. Um, nom. What? <gasps> ah, he ate it! Nom, nom. Is he gonna make more? Ah, ah he swallowed it! Beep, beep, beep. Ah, he's flatlining! Uh oh. What are you doing? If you swallow that key, you'll definitely choke on it! Because. Someone might use this key for murder! What? Because keys are mysterious! Something bad happens. If something bad happens, it would be too late. Let's get along. I want everyone to get along. Phew. Oh, Monodam, you're so reckless. So? Let's carry Monodam away for now. We'll carry him like a kind boss taking care of a drunk employee. What? So long. Farewell. What was up with all that? So there's no key to this room we're in? So does that mean we can't get the key? What the hell? But I'm only gonna lock this door when I'm inside working, so... Oh, okay. So it wasn't locked originally when we came here. Just came here, locked it from the inside. Was working, as she says. And then she came out. I see. I don't care if I can't open or close the door from the outside. Ah. Oh, I guess that's fine then. By the way. By the way, this guy said they know everything about us, right? But someone could lock... Uh, I don't know. That's probably why the slab fits Angie's taste so well. What does that mean? This school is specially made for us? But... Monokuma's cleaned that before, but... Is that really possible? It's obvious because they... Well, I don't know. 
they've been doing on uh, this up uh, apparently there's been ongoing construction so they could have made this like what i don't know i don't know i don't have anything to say about this this i don't think this per particular point is important i think it was already a given that they would know everything about us i never doubted that for a second so i don't think i need to think too hard on this point this giant complex was built just for the 16 of us only Atua knows for sure. it's a miraculous mystery that only atua knows but it doesn't matter. As long as it's comfortable, I'm fine. That's a similar kind of thing that um, Celeste said before she murdered, started murdering people. How she was fine with everything here. Uh, yeah. If our lives here become more enriched, then there's even less reason to leave this place. <laughs> That's true. Are we supposed to be okay with that? So weird. <laughs> 